Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're gonna go over the graphic system overview. So with that said, let's do this. Alright, so let's go over the last video of week 2. That's gonna be our graphic system overview right over here. So to go over all of this subject, I'm gonna be using the Masson emulator, which I have right over here. And of course, if you like the FCUX, you can use that one, but in reality, why not use both? Nobody. There's no there's no, no drawbacks to use both emulators. And I like this one because it has a few different debug tools. It's not available on the FCUX, like the APU debugger and so forth. And has a little bit more AV uh, good uh, UI. So you can see some of this debugging scene over here. Like, like I said, you can use one or the other, but in reality, using as much tools as we can possibly can to create our best game available is a great idea. So we're gonna go over all of these subjects. So let's just go into the main content, shall we? All right, lastly, let's go over our graphics system overview. And to cover all this content, I'm gonna be using the Masson emulator. And by the way, all of this is on the Nerdy Nice website mirror, which I've been using as the main content of this video. But regardless, let's go back to our emulator, your massive emulator is my personally, is my favorite. So to go over all of that, let me just go, let's go over debugger or debug and go over PPU viewer. So you can see what's happening inside the PPU. Let's go over the first material, which is tile. So all graphics is made by eight by eight pixel tiles. So every art, should I say, on the NES, it's made by 8 by 8 pixels, and those 8 by 8 pixels is a tile. In larger characters like Mario, Mario, so I keep saying Mario, Mario is made by 8 by 8 tiles. So 8 by 8 pixels, one tile, so multiple tiles all together. And of course, all the backgrounds made by tiles. It, it does that because it consumes the less memory, so it, all the information is, is already inside RAM, so it's quick cool to access. And as obviously is in 3D graphics is not possible because it really didn't take off till the PlayStation generation, regardless. So to show my tile ways, let's go over our back to your PPU viewer. Let me click times two to look bigger. So here's our background. If you see let me, oh, here's Mega Man. I have it on pause so you don't have to here is blowing killing me. So I don't have to hear all the music playing while I'm talking. So here's the background. And as I scroll around over here, you see this small square area. And right here, it says tile. So if I scroll right over here into this ladder, you'll see right away. Let me go over over here so it doesn't change. So this area right over here. So I see on the bottom right, all the information that's over here already. And here you see the, this graphics part of it. And that is a tile right over here. It's an 8, eight pixel area. In multiple of them, if I were to like show tile grid, so this whole map is made by multiple tiles being stitched, stitched together to create our background. It's pretty cool, right? And not only is the background made of it, so our Earth sprites, which I'm gonna go over. Here's Mega Man. So let me go back over here. It says sprite has enough to, or PPU has enough for 64 sprites in memory in total and things that move around on the screen, like Mario, is considered a sprite. So if you ever use a game engine and you have to inherit the sprite um, base, you're gonna automatically get stuff like position, velocity. So most of them, uh, if you will use it like on, on Unreal Engine, you have the pawn area, area, the pawn class, the, you can give information like move, so think of it, if a tile has to move, that's going to be considered a sprite. And if you come over here, under our sprite, you see right over here that has no, a position right over here. So, well, this also has a position, but that's a fixed object over here. That you don't want this. If you want this, I don't know, let's say, I don't know, like this square over here to move, around that's going to be considered a sprite but you don't we want this this square over here to remain stationary to this area so that's a background 
Sprites like Mega Man, you want it, you want it to move around. Like you want the life bar to move around. You don't want the life this life bar to be stuck over here, go right and then never see it again. So if it has a movement, that has to be that is a sprite. And here's some of the options that a sprite has. You have like for example, here's the face of Mega Man, which is tile index zero. And here you have the option to flip around vertical, horizontally, priority, showing the back on the front, and it has the position. So move around, it's a sprite. Next, you have our background, which I just show you. Uh, the only thing over here is display front and backwards. So we have our priority over here, sprite skin. So think of a Photoshop layer, middle, forward layer, and the background. So you have front, middle, and back, just like a Photoshop layer, like I was mentioned before. And the screen is big enough by 32 by 30 uh, tiles. I need to show you that. Let's go. So this background over here. Let's go over here. Name table. Let's go over here. It says right here, location 00, location 031. So from 0 to 31, that's 32 tiles. So you have 32 tiles. And here is 00. You have 0 to, oh, it's not the end. Here it is. 0 to 24, 29. So that's 30. So that's, we have a total to display this picture 32 wide and 30 on the horizontal level. Then you have pattern tables. And that's all the data that's the store in our ROM or RAM. So our character ROM or RAM. Each pattern table holds 256 tiles. So one is used for the background and the other is for sprites. So all the graphic that's on the screen must be on this table. So let me show you guys what the pattern table is. And that is the character view of right over here. So here is our top, here is our sprite and here is our background table and you can see right over here so we have 255 so each which nicely corresponds to a hex value ff the max value so this is whole part of here and there's a whole background over here so let me scroll up let me times so now and here is the other part, the background. And if you want to see over here, I have 8 by 16, so you can see a little bit better um, when there's multiple sprites. So let me go back over here, times 2. And here, if you ever use a system like RPG Maker or tiled with the to do maps open software you notice something like this is going to be called like a tile set or a sprite sheet so that's what you can think of a pattern table as so all the information like a tile set or, or a sprite sheet and then you have attributes tables and that sets the colors by each two by two tiles section i'm sorry each two by two tile section meaning our tiles is eight by eight, so each two by two section. So if you think of a whole tile and divide it by four, every two by two section is gonna get a set color. That means that out of 16 by 16, only four different colors. I'm gonna go over this a little bit later, but you can see the attribute tables. Come over here, come over here. So it's right over here. The attribute data 55 and the attribute data this colors is our pellets which is the next section over here uh, two areas that contain our color information one for the background and one for the sprite so each one of these has 16 colors so if I come over here under color pellets so here's all the colors that we can use and as you see each color has a number so if I want the color pink over here, it's gonna be 34. And you can see here in Masson that I have the color 0F, which is the 
dark background over here. I have the color 30, 28, and 06. So let's go. So 30, let me see if I see it. it's white right over here. And you see here, it's also white, it's 30. 28, which is a, here it is, oh, not here, the 28, no, it's 2B, my bad. Here's the green, corresponding to the same as this. So as you see over here, one of the part of the, of the attributes is to hold this palette color. Not only every tile has a background color, even the sprites, so. Mega Man, see different palettes for Mega Man. And that pretty much covered the whole system for uh, the NES, at least this overview section. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. We covered the entire week just uh, overview of the NES. So up to now, you should have a, at least a good understanding how a NES programming part of it works. And in the next video, I'm going to go over our memory mapping. Here's the, which is also here on week two. Here's the CPU uh, memory mapping. Here's the PPU, at least the RAM part. And if you scroll down here to week three, it's come down here to, where is it? Here goes 6502 processor overview. Here's memory mapping as well again. So I'm just going to go over it quickly in the next video. And that's it for this video. If you guys like all the subjects, all the videos that I made so far, if you like, please feel free to just hit the subscribe button. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.